players are set. Center official tonight, Sergio Gonzalez. One last check, make sure everything's okay. 45 on the scoreboard, and the ball is rolling in Central New York. Both teams will want to get off to a good start here. These wet days when the weather makes things a little bit unpredictable, the first thing you want to do is make sure you're safe and you're making sure that you get off to, on the front foot. Giorgio Kachevsky already looking for the long ball up towards Nicholas Kalukian and cut away. Syracuse has tried that long ball all year. And that is the style of play imposed by the head coach of the Orange, Ian McIntyre. Season number 14 in charge, coming off a historic treble-winning 2022 campaign. But, Dean, the thing you and I were talking about earlier today was, yes, this team can play over the top and direct, but they can also link up passes as well, as you saw in that Clemson game that led to the free kick. That's right. In the open, you know, a perfect example of how this team has come together over the course of the last two months. They really have started to put things together. They've become a, a threat both in playing direct or pulling balls back, changing the point of attack, finding you know, numbers up situations out wide, or they can play through thirds of the field like the example we showed in the open. Really don't, probably don't get enough credit for that ability. Oluoya Gunlay with a bit of a tug. Appeals early from the Wolfpack for a yellow card. Seemed like a pretty clear stoppage of play, Dean. Yeah, uh, they both got tangled up a little bit, but it doesn't. Maybe before we got the look at them in the camera, something happened possibly before. Was Enrique Santos trying to get the other side of Oluoya Gunley, who's getting a stern talking to right now? Oluoya Gunley, the Ontario native, starting his 11th contest tonight, has had a little bit of trouble this year, picked up a red card earlier in the year against Duke. Well, the thing with Oya Gunley is he's an aggressive defender. You don't want to weed that out. You want him to be aggressive. You want him to stay hungry. Um, you know, sometimes with that comes the occasional card, the occasional foul. Um, but that's part of the part of the reason why he's a good defender. You know, he's intimidating along with Josh Belouz along that back line and Booster Schoberg. They're physically imposing, imposing, athletic, and agile. Rain continuing to pour in Central New York. Goldmouth looking a little bit worse for wear. It's a good ball in, and Wickham had to come out for it. It's out for a corner. Orange appealing for a goal kick, but a nervy sign early on for Syracuse. Well, this this is one of those days where you want to try and keep the ball not you know out from in front of your own goal. So if mistakes happen, slips, you know deflections, skipping balls, you don't want that going on in front of your own box. First corner goes the way of the visitors. Good ball in. Flag went up. And the ball had gone out of play. Dean, you and I were looking at the field before the game got underway, and the field itself looked pretty good. The goal mouth, though, maybe not the same case. Yeah, I think the goal mouth that Syracuse is defending in this first half is a little bit worse for the wear, but as I see the other one, that two is, is a little rough. I think as the day wears on, it's going to get worse. So, um, you know, Rain is in the forecast. Uh, again, you know, you want to keep the ball out of your penalty area if you're the defending team. Strange things can happen on days like today. Um, and so you want to prevent that from happening in front of your net. Taken down by Felipe Diagostini. Draws three to Defenders with him. Kachevsky trying to skip by one. He cut out only as far as McKenna. Coach Kiefer, you know, has had to deal with a lot of injuries. Key players, primarily along the back, back line. So he's really experimented over the last, actually, two or three weeks with different lineups in the 
back to cover for cards for injuries for um, you know changing and trying to find something that works best uh, today is actually a little different than probably the last two games that he's come out but they've done well to kind of make adjustments and keep competitive. Good flick to let in Singleman in behind. Can't do much with the first cross. Coach Keefer did mention to us in his two decade long coaching career he's never really tried Five at the back. Diagostini. Chesky was on onto it and just lashed it at a little early. Syracuse doing a good job of getting numbers forward. As you can see, all the, the orange jerseys, jerseys there. Layoff by D'Agostino. You know, to Kachevsky who just pulls it wide. Good look for the Orange. There is the head coach of the Wolfpack, George Kiefer. And Dean, somebody you are not unfamiliar here with. Well, you know, I was commiserating with him. You know, our job is easy. We can walk away at the end of the day and we don't have to worry about the lineup and the injuries or the you know how do we prepare the team he's he's been through more than his fair share of hardship this season with uh, you know he had probably one of the most experienced defensive back lines in the ACC get Chesky with a lot of space awesome. And Abbas got his right foot to it. Get sort of squashed with some season ending injuries to two.
your own half of the field. And they're kind of putting themselves back into the same situation with that backwards. You've got to stay forward, get numbers up around the ball, and keep it in the opponent's half of the field. Austin Abbas looking long. It's a good ball. Making the run. And Baloo's there to cover once again for Syracuse. Levesque checking his shoulder, went down under the contact. Junior Nare, the guilty party. So we're 10 minutes in, and Syracuse is doing a really, really good job of just keeping NC State pinned in. Any balls that come out, they're putting pressure on the player that receives it. If not, not winning it outright. And State's going to have to see if they can break that cycle. Levesque going down again. The Frenchman with some fancy footwork. Syracuse in set pieces has been combination this year that has worked for the Orange. Yet to win any really in tantalizing real estate. Leah Gunley now. Edwards. Trying to drive inside. The return pass, but nowhere to go. Chevsky is wide open on the near side touchline. Two arms raised from the captain. Nobody's picked him out just yet.
Well block. Uh, what am I seeing? I, I, look, I think we've had a good start. Um, it's difficult to break down, but I think uh, uh, we've done a good job of stopping these outlet balls, and um, it's been a, a you know, a, 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 a imp uh, we need a little bit more quality, but we've had a couple of half chances, and um, I think ensuring that we don't, uh, this doesn't happen in, in transition. Just real quickly, Coach, yeah. um, you know, winning those second balls in midfield are key. You're doing a great job of it right now. Do you anticipate any changes from NC State to maybe get more help in there? I, look, I, I think they're quite comfortable in this shape and uh, really telling us, you know, it, it's on us to, to, to break them down. Um, we're doing a good job of getting some pressure and, you know, our back line is kind of winning that first ball. It's just ensuring that we, we don't, uh, we concentrate and uh, um, in those transitional moments. But uh, look, and then when it opens up a little bit like that, can we get numbers forward and, and numbers in the box, Dean? Coach, thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Opportunity to open things up now with Edwards, who went down on the edge of the area. Barely appealed for it, and the referee didn't seem too interested either. Samuel Taranova, the freshman goalkeeper, barking out orders. Just his third start this year. The third goalie that NC State has featured in 2023 as well. This game will be sped up a little bit here. It, you know, if a goal does occur, I, I think then you'll see both teams play with a little bit more urgency. I mean, NC State will have to push numbers forward. Um, Syracuse at that point will try and push for a second. But, you know, it's the old saying that the game needs a goal to get it moving here. And, and uh, you know, right now, as Coach said, I think NC State, as we, we talked about, they are kind of backed into their own half of the field, but it's not easy to break that down, and they're, they're relatively comfortable playing out of that formation. Blue surveying the scene. Apparently lost the ball for a second. McKenna forced back. And this gives them an opportunity to get out of their half of the field. Now the important thing is winning that ball that Jaheim plays out, you know, unfortunately, a free kick here, handball, the good pressure by Hilly to try and pressure them. You're hurting them, Noah, by getting him behind, yeah? Coach, I'm wondering if you heard what a Coach McIntyre just said to Noah Singleman, who's usually playing on the wings for Syracuse today, more centrally. And Coach McIntyre is saying that Singleman is hurting them by getting him behind. Well, I, I believe he was saying he will hurt them if he gets in behind them. And so those late runs from the midfield when they're holding a higher line once they are outside their half of the field, second level runs out of Syracuse's midfield to get in behind are the ones that kind of are off the radar. Early chance for Syracuse once again. Nate Edwards pleading his case on deaf ears. As we have a special guest in the booth, Tori Ball, Syracuse Athletics, to talk a little bit about the new initiative in Syracuse. And tell us more about what the average fan can do to get involved and stay connected with this program. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, Tori Ball, the, the Deputy Athletic Director, came in um, to do a lot of business development, but uh, really, really focused on our new initiative, Orange United, uh, part of our collective, uh, our preferred collective. Um, so, you, you know, we have our development arm, CAF. Uh, they, they focus on the buildings. Um, my, this group that we work with now is, is focusing on the legacy and the strength of our programs. Uh, just like uh, men's soccer won a national championship last year, we're, we're trying to continue that. So NIL is, is something that's, what, two years old? Uh, but, but Syracuse is in a unique position now, especially with uh, our new collective coming on, Orange United. And I think a lot of people have questions about NIL. As you mentioned, just two years old, but how can Syracuse fans get involved with this program? Absolutely. Uh, so orangeunited.com uh, and, and just researching it, it would be my first step. But uh, we, we have three different models. Uh, we, we are really focused on businesses. Uh, so businesses within the Syracuse community, within the greater New York community uh, can get involved by, you know, getting a student athlete or, or, or trying to buy some of our student athletes time. Uh, we also have a subscription model uh, where, where it's kind of a crowdsourcing model uh, where 
general fans, you might not have, you know, the major uh, dollars to donate, but you uh, can, can subscribe $10, $25, $45 a month uh, just to support your favorite team, be it men's soccer, men's basketball, women's lacrosse, whatever it is you can uh, support. Well, it's a great program, and, and uh, I know as a, a former coach, uh, of an Olympic sport, you know, it's it's a pleasure when, you know, this stuff trickles down to our sports. And, and to be honest, uh, I, I know the kids in the program, I know the alumni in this program are always looking for ways to support it. And uh, this is certainly a good opportunity to do that. It is, it is. So so we actually had a, had a football game here recently uh, where we had the men's soccer team all out uh, signing autographs. And, and for that opportunity, Orange United paid each and every uh, one of them outside of the international students because we have some weird, wonky rules with uh, international students. Uh, but, but those are the kind of opportunities we're trying to provide for our student athletes. Well, I can tell you it's very much appreciated. Uh, and, and I know not just men's soccer, but all the other sports are, are very appreciative of the work you guys do. And, and um, you know, looking for ways to, to support the Syracuse soccer program or any of those programs, uh, this is a perfect example of how they can chip in. Absolutely, and and uh, I'll reiterate, uh, th this is this Orange United program is focused on legacy, uh, how how we can maintain strength uh, in all our programs. Uh, so if, if people want to contribute, uh, go to orangeunited.com and, and and check us out. And that's the best part. It's not only bringing focus to the student athletes from the Olympic sports and more, but also for the community as well, for the people, for the businesses too. It's, as you mentioned, a collective, not only by name, but by nature. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a group effort. Uh, and Syracuse has a strong tradition. Uh, I, I was actually a student athlete. I played football here, uh, the, the American football style. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and, and I know the community here is strong and passionate about Syracuse athletics. Uh, and, and one way that they, we usually funnel them is, is through CAF, but, but now there's other opportunities to, to support our student athletes in a more direct manner. Super. Tori Ball, thank you so much for your time and for the advice as well. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Great opportunity. And I'm sure, uh, you know, something that will benefit all the programs here at Syracuse. An exciting time in college sports. Syracuse trying to instill a little bit of excitement into their offensive line. 17 and a half to go from the first at SU Soccer Stadium. Kendall. No, I was just going to say Kendall Edwards, you know, in the middle of the back of the NC State team, along with um, Lawson Abbas and uh, Plumina. They really got their work cut out for themselves today, but they're really doing a good job of anchoring that back row of five players and making sure that Syracuse just can't get a good look. Kachewski on the volley. Caught it well. Just on cue, I jinxed. Lost in a boss. He needed to get out those <laughs> quicker to close this down. But Kachevsky with a good look here is as good as you're going to get. A boss, the number four, trying to get out to close it. But that's where on a wet day like today, deflections. Th those are good shots to take. You know, one of the one of the conditions of the match we always talk about when it's wet like this, it adds ten yards to your shot. You know, and and as a defender, you have to understand that you got to get out further to close people down. The ball can skip, can deflect, can go anywhere. And, and what, the last thing you want as a defending team is balls headed towards your own goal on a wet day that can deflect, skip, um, do almost anything. And back to our original point, if it's going to happen, you want it to happen in the other team's box. And when it skips like that, credit as well to Kaczewski for taking it out of the air. Had the technique, locked his ankle, just couldn't bend it inside of the post. Coach Kiefer made some changes for NC State. So, too, will Coach McIntyre. Lorenzo Baselli, the leading goal scorer for the Orange, back at SU Soccer Stadium. Meanwhile, at the back, it's number two, Pablo Pedragosa, who played his last four years with Coach Kiefer at NC State. Yeah, it's a, a sign of the new transfer portal, the um, impact that it has on rosters. Uh, Coach Kiefer has one of his former players playing for Syracuse, Duke. Scotty Taylor is on the NC State roster uh, and played at Duke last year. So players move around, and Coach Kiefer made a good point. You, you know, the COVID year 
really benefited the student athlete, believe it or not, from the standpoint that, you know, guys play their four years, they stay on time to graduate, they graduate. Um, and now these players are, even though they're transferring possibly to another school, they have the benefit of leaving college, you know, with a master's degree and a, a, an undergraduate degree. And, you know, that extra year, as long as kids are doing what they're supposed to be doing in the classroom, which most of these kids, 99% of them are doing, uh, they, they walk away with an undergraduate degree as well as a master's degree. And, um, you know, you've got a couple of examples of them, you know, in this game here today. Pedro Gosa to take the throw in. Played every minute last year in 2022 for the Wolfpack. Been a consistent rotation player. In fact, started the last four straight for Syracuse and came off the bench today. Syracuse has a lot of inter interchangeable parts. You know, you see a lot of the midfielders are able to play anywhere in the midfield. A lot of the guys in the back can push into the midfield. Noah Singleman is kind of the all-around utility guy. I think in the last two years, he's probably played almost every position except goalkeeper and as a front runner. Whistle sounds from Sergio Gonzalez. Stopping the restart. There was some contact in there. See if we can see this. Both players going up for the ball. Yeah, a little bit of contact there on the Syracuse player. I think both players were legitimately going up for the ball. That's always the discussion with these 50-50 balls in the air is when players are putting their elbows out to try and create space in themselves, if they jump higher than the other person or maybe jump a little sooner, sometimes that elbow errantly connects. Right. I think, you know, what referees look for, are they moving, you know, their arms or their elbows outside what would normally be the silhouette of their body when they're making that type of a, you know, athletic move? You know, if somebody's... <laughs> chicken wing and a guy with his elbow that's a foul <laughs> you know but if you go up and you try to to legitimately propel yourself up sometimes bigger players hit smaller players and smaller players fall down not through any intent of trying to gain an advantage edwards in a pickle and lost it nc state now with an opportunity utah toya good turn to open up space in front of him Hill Butte trying to play in. It's a good sequence. Cruz. Freshman running out of space. And the ball running out of play as well. NC State's got a, a good little sequence there. they got to do a good job here keeping it up here at this end of the field now. Making sure they're not giving Syracuse an opportunity to turn and advance the ball. It's Kalen Tommy, pardon me, on the last play. He was also a little bit shaken up as well. Asking for a foul. Tommy with just one point on the year. Coming against Gardner Webb back on 27th of September. One of many international players on the NC State roster from Cape Town, South Africa. Irving Cruz is into the game. Up top for NC State. Out wide and up top, but Again, trying to find the right combination of guys to maybe hold the ball. NC State moving a little better now. Pedro Gosa once again. Vaselli checked in for it. Hakeem Karamako is also in as well. Some fresh legs for State. His crews this time trying to run it down, and Shaheem Wickham is never one to stay in his area. Syracuse could have some pace here with Nate Edwards. On his left, tried to play the overlapping run of Baselli in the box and running out of room. And in the end, goes out for an NC State goal kick. Edwards initiates a good attack up to Baselli. Baselli trying to get to the end line and couldn't quite get his foot around the ball to cross it in. Right on cue. In comes Scotty Taylor, the transfer from Duke, up top to give Hilly a break. It's heavy weather, heavy ground, takes a lot out of your legs. NC State also replenishing the front half of their team to see if they can establish some of the, some of the possession, get a little bit on the ball more. It's 
Scotty Taylor making his fourth straight substitute appearance. Only one goal to his name this season. Now Makina once again, eyeing up across. Instead plays the short pass. Singleman. Flag staying down against Kachevsky. Ball staying in play as well. The boss deflecting the cross. Makina goes off of his shin last. NC State doing a little bit better job defending in the corners now. Syracuse got to move the ball. They got to move the ball from player to player. Try and beat NC State across the field. NC State good at getting numbers behind the ball, around the ball. It's tough to break down. Only fast ball movement. And there is no space to play in behind them only because they, they are backed up in front of their own goal. Butte on the second ball just sends it skywards. Pedro Go says time and space. Karamoko is going to be a guy to keep an eye on for NC State. Balls like that, they can play it over the top in transition, early transition. His speed can be a factor up top. Scotty Taylor's got the pace to get in behind, and um, Syracuse commits a lot of players forward. Obviously, keeping the ball in the opponent's half of the field, you get stretched out, you push players into their half of the field. As you watch this now, you can imagine all the space behind the back three of Syracuse, NC State, and that last play looking to get in behind early. Put balls into that space. Is played out of the back once again by the Wolfpack. Singleman will try it. Boss in the way. Captain for the Orange tussling with Jeremiah Luoma. Scotty Taylor's turn to give chase now. That's good pressure by Taylor, but he needs players in tow with him. So, you know, the next ball, obviously you're not going to get somebody all the way back to the keeper, but the rest of the team's got to follow to try and get some territory. Talk about it. Let's talk about it. Chesky's made the run. Another cross deflected once again. Syracuse hasn't seen a ball in the box in quite some time. Back heel for Singleman. Kept it in play. First header need to be dealt with. Second one falls to Pedro Gosa. Now Nate Edwards on the edge of the area. And on his favorite right foot. Selly tried to take it down. Never had the time nor the space. Danger still present for NC State. McKenna's turn to whip it in and sends it well over the frame. Sammy, just leave it in one place, Sammy. Don't put it, pick it up again. There were flashes of quick play, bright play from Syracuse, and in the end, it's just another opportunity that doesn't materialize. Well, I think, you know, that was a little ambitious there, but I'm sure he mishit that. I think he was trying to swerve that into possibly Baselli. Um But it's going to take an ounce of patience, and it's hard to do because you get frustrated because you... You almost have to be perfect if you're going to play through them without it touching, you know, one of the many players they have, you know, packed in behind the ball. And NC State's credit, you know, they're making it difficult. Syracuse men's soccer scores against NC State. Syracuse women's soccer on the road against number three Tar Heels. And it is UNC that's taking the lead in minute number 38. A tough test on the road. Macy Bell breaking through the Syracuse back line and putting the ball past Shea Vanderbosch. Vanderbosch, the sophomore goalkeeper, already with seven saves in a record-chasing season. Already at number two in the all-time single-season saves list. Hit triple digits last time Syracuse was here. Dean, that's never... The most promising sign when your goalkeeper is making 100 saves in a season, but speaks to the sophomore's ability. Well, I'll tell you what, it, you know, she's done very, very well to keep them in games that, that maybe they've been up against it a little bit. Um, you know, and, and until you can kind of get things sorted out in front of the goal, it's nice to know and have the confidence of, of a player that's playing at that level behind you. Shevsky with a bit of a pull. Utah Toya warding off the space and winning the free kick. Syracuse has done a good job of keeping Toya and Butte under wraps today. 
Um, you know, we haven't called their name too much. In fairness to them, they're a little bit outnumbered in the middle of the midfield there. But they'll have to be more of a presence. Daniel Diaz Bonilla presence up top for Syracuse and on the sidelines watching on for his turn to enter the fray. Meanwhile, Schoberg defends well on the paint. Great piece of individual defending there. On, NC State have forayed forward for the first time in quite some time. Karamoko can be a problem. Showing it there, the number 31. You know, he can get on the ball. He's a big body. He can run. He's been hampered a little bit with, in, with injuries as well. But he's getting time today. And it will be Daniel diaz Benia's turn to sub on. He replaces Nicholas Kalukian up top for Syracuse. diaz Benia, graduate student. Formerly played college ball with Princeton. Still yet to register a point in his new shade of orange, but has appeared in almost every contest. Singleman on a run. Cut out by Abbas, who went over the ball. Singleman in some discomfort as well. Both players down. Abbas went in hard on the tackle. Gene, what do you see here? Well, Singleman doing a good job of trying to advance the ball. Abbas knows he has to make a tackle here because there is space in behind him that can be exploited. He does just that. He makes a tackle and continues through. Catches Singleman. You know, I, I believe it's a foul. I hope both players are okay. It did seem like Lawson Abbas got the ball first, but it was that follow-through yeah, that left both players down. Yeah, the follow-through, I think, is what drew the whistle. But that's a great, great recognition by Singleman that to get forward while they are out of their half of the field. And, yeah, you know, Abbas didn't get all of the ball. He got part of it, and the follow-through, I think, is what caused both the foul and the clash. He, I think he probably got the worst of it here, but hopefully he's okay. He's a very good player, freshman from Ghana who's come in to a back line and, you know, stepping right into ACC games and being asked to perform at a level uh, that, that, you know, you see in the ACC is not an easy thing to do. He's done very well today to kind of secure that back line. He was the missing piece with all of the veteran players coming back for NC State at the back of the team. Fourth and fifth year players, they felt like they were missing a left center back. Um, Lawson Abbas was the guy they, they handpicked to be that left center back uh, and brought him in and then all the injuries hit and Coach Kiefer has been trying to bring him along and he's also suffered um, you know, the impact of some injuries throughout the course of the season. The ACC, not a very forgiving league. Not at all. <laughs> when, you, when you have injuries, especially to your key players along the back line. Most coaches sleep well at night if they know they've got a, a, a good back line. Kiefer thought that was the case. But you get the phone calls, as he was saying, as they trickle in and people are injured and they're not done for the year. Not, not good. Edwards with a step over, just trying to provide a little bit of a spark. Schoberg with a good first touch to take it down. Back line for Syracuse still very high. Oh, just a, an example of how packed in NC State is. Syracuse's back players are, you know, inside the center circle, inside the half of the field. Referee got in the way. Sergio Gonzalez blowing the whistle. A relatively new rule in the game. And the play must be restarted. Eight fouls as well today from the whistle of Gonzalez. No yellow cards just yet. I think from his end, it's been a pretty uneventful day, which I'm sure he would just as soon keep it that way. More pass by Mr. Schoberg. Paulo Pedregosa stuck his leg out but didn't get it. The gift now for the Wolfpack. Can they start to build something? Just materialize a little bit better with 
The passing in the midfield. First one intercepted. This ball movement here. Now can we find a way to get the ball on the other side as quick as possible? Can NC State shift to keep up with that? Akina has a lot of space to explore. One-time flick on from Diaz Bonilla. That's a great idea by Baselli. Coming off the back line of NC State. And then first time flipping a ball in behind the row of five players for a deep-lying midfielder to run on to. That's one way to get in behind. Intergosen wins it. Butte tried to take it down. Abbas will step in front once again. Irvin Cruz spraying it wide for Hakeem That's Karamoko. Exactly what NC State needs to do. A good ball by Abbas up to Irwin. Now up to the big man, Karamoka. That's what they need to do on a more regular basis if they're going to have success today. This is a good sequence for NC State. Left to the back post, and Luoma was there and jumped a little bit offside as well. Best sequence of the day for NC State. Good, good ball clip. in. Yeah, good clip into the back post. Luoma. Luoma does a good job to get onto the back of this. Kachevsky right with him, though. Both coaches were, were really high on making sure that their kids came out to compete today. And that every head ball, you know, two people go up, not one. No one gets a free header. No one gets a free look on a wet day like today, which we've managed to, to, to not see any torrential downpours. It's just been a steady sprinkle here. The field, the integrity of the field is held up. Big win at the back. Diaz Benia didn't have the space he thought he had. Utah Toya now. Taylor with a flick and Pedro Gosa read it. Actually, a good ball by Toya. I mean, Scotty Taylor's got to do what he can to get that and make it into a better ball, even if it's a little bit off. See, State can get a little bit of rhythm here. They can string together another good attack. Syracuse does not want to let that happen just before the half. Singleman now. It's behind the run of Baselli. Voss lost his footing, but able to get it to his teammate. That's a good win by Belouz. This is good stuff. Falls to Makina. Clipping it towards Edwards. Headed down in front. The volley is wide. Matteo Levesque read it and put it past the post. That's actually a great attack just before the half here for Syracuse. It's about as good a look as you're going to get on a day like today. Get a line, get a line. Last 30 seconds here. Both teams just want to get into the locker room, I'm sure. Maybe time for one more attack. Not much, and NC State in no hurry to take it either. 10, 9, it will be a scoreless 7, first 6, 45 from SU Soccer Stadium. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. At halftime, your score Number 22, Syracuse. Syracuse. The fourth time they have held opponents without a shot in a half. A, a, a fifth seed, if you will, or a sixth seed, seventh seed that gets you a home game in the first round of the ACC tournament. It no is how you slice it, though. You're going to play a good team. Whether you get a bye or you don't get a bye, that's, that's life in the ACC. That is the nature of the conference, the most competitive soccer conference in the country, not only in the men's, but also the women's side of the game. Mateo Levesque starting things off in the second half for the Orange. All 11 starters back on the pitch. Edwards back for the Frenchman, whipping it in towards the Agostini and headed out for a corner by Luoma. Jeremiah Luoma in his first start as we highlight the official J.C. Rivero with eight fouls tonight. No yellow cards doled out just far, but Dean, the game really hasn't merited it. No, and he's done well. I mean, look, <laughs> this is a coach talking. If no one notices the ref, then he did a good job. You know, and Rivero's done a very good job today. Towards Belouz. It may fall to Schoberg. Karamoko was up for it as well. Back towards Levesque, and it's a little strong in the end. The only natural left footer out there for Syracuse, unable to keep it in touch. 
You can see it's still, still a light rain. It's been going all day from the beginning of the game. Field is holding up well. It hasn't, you know, overwhelmed the, the actual surface of the field. This field is, takes water well. NC State also with the same starting 11 with two noticeable exceptions, Ervin Cruz and Hakim Karamoko, the latter of which really caught your eye, Dean, two freshmen on the wings for the Wolfpack in the second half. Yeah, well, I think they warrant more time. I, I mean, they both did well. They had an impact on the game when they came in early on. I'm sorry, you know, when they came on at the end of the first half and Coach Kiefer rewarding them with keeping them on for the first part of this half. And right on cue, J.C. Rivero deals the first business card of the afternoon to Oluoya Gunlight. Yeah, and there's some contact there, but, you know, again, for me, it's big boy soccer. I don't know that. But, listen, it's a free kick. It's a dangerous situation. Syracuse has to react, as does NC State. Good opportunity here to get themselves potentially a good opportunity at goal. See what they decide to do with this. Opportunity from just about 30 yards out for Hakim Karamoko, New York City native, in his first year playing college ball. Four in the wall for Jaheim Wickham. It's Karamoko to strike. Wickham dove a little bit early, got two hands to it in the end. Cruz trying to take it down and scuffed it. You know, I think, you, you know, that's the way goals will be scored on a day like today. Y you know, the initial save is made. Difficult day to hold on to things. Good initial strike. Baluz does a good job to clear it, but doesn't clear the area. Erwin Cruz, that's as good a look as you're going to get. Both teams with a little bit of quality, in the a little more quality in the final third. I think it was Kachevsky and Levesque in the first half for Syracuse. Now Cruz, you know, potentially, you know, a goal gets scored got to take advantage of those those situations because they're, they're going to be few and far between. And you hope it's not the announcer's curse, but in the first two and a half minutes of the second half, already more end to end action than really the last maybe 10, 15 minutes of the first half. Right, and I think, you know, NC State has grown into the game uh, content with letting the play come to them in the first half, shorten the game. In fact, that was the first shot on target for either team. Syracuse held NC State shotless in the first half. Fourth time the Orange have done that this season. And then Hakim Karamoko's free kick, the first on net for either side this afternoon after Oluoya Gunley's yellow card, the first of the day, his sixth on the year, and the most for Syracuse this season. Throwing for the orange, single on over to take. Nate Edwards has ventured to the top of the 18-yard box. It's very compressed from Syracuse. They may look to spring wide as soon as the ball's in play. It was in play. And Kalukian went down. It's a clever little flick over by Kalukian to try and get in behind and peel off. Didn't seem that there was very much in it for the sophomore, but Always one to try and take players on, beat them himself. And Dean, maybe that's what this game is missing a little bit. We talked during halftime that Syracuse hasn't really connected passes at the speed that they need to be, but maybe some of these players out here, some of the more proficient dribblers like Kaluki and like D'Agostini say, you know what, I'm going to take a couple extra guys on, see what I can do myself. Well, in the right places and at the right time, that's not a bad response. I mean, wet weather is dribbler's weather. You know, as a dribbler, you, you dictate the play. If you can find, if you can get isolated one versus one with a defender in the final third, you know, absolutely be courageous, take the guy on, be brave, go after, go after him. Um, but until you get to that point, you got to move the ball quickly to get yourself in a situation where you can find overloads and, and you know, break a team down to find that situation where you're one versus one. Samuel Terranova to restart play in just his third appearance of the year. Third goalkeeper for NC State this year. The number one, Lucas Hatzios, had a strong 2022 start of the year and then picked up a couple injuries. So too did the number two. So the freshman who grew up just an hour away from Dale Soccer Field is called into action and really hasn't had too much to do tonight. 
Oluoya Gunley trying to change that. And Karamoko the other way at speed. Oya Gunley went in again. And referee waves advantage. Karamoko popped right back up and beats Makina with relative ease. Karamoko going all the way and scoring! A sumptuous solo effort! And the freshman gets his first of the year in some style! Great individual effort. He made an impact in the first half when he came on. Despite being tangled up here, gets up, continues to drive. Quick little touch in behind. And striking a good ball to the far post. Really had an impact on the game. I suppose it makes sense that it would be him that scored the goal. NC State will have a long way to go, though, before... His third of the year. The New York City native. A former Golden Boot winner at the youth level. Played some very high level soccer before making the jump to the college game. And continues his form. Just a great effort. You know, Olu Oyagunle tangled him up. He wasn't deterred, got up and kept playing. There was no whistle. But that might just be what this game needed, as I think you'll see Syracuse play with some urgency now. And NC State will have to keep playing. A whistle goes against Syracuse, and the momentum completely flipped on its head. Last ACC road win for the Wolfpack. You got to turn the clock back to 2019 against a ranked foe. It's been some time since the Wolfpack picked up all three on the road against a conference opponent. And it's a different look now with Hakim Karamoko's third of the year opening the scoring tonight. NC State came out at the half. really put themselves in a position, came out with some energy, started to get some life at the end of the first half, continued through. Now they have something to show for it. Syracuse has to stay patient, though. There's a long way to go in this game. They need to stay with what they've been doing as far as keeping NC State pinned in, stay true to the process, get the ball moving. Edwards cut it back. Nobody made the late run. All the forward options for Syracuse. Too eager to get on the end of the ball. Now Jaheim Wickham plays the short pass for Pedro Gosa. Forwards for the Orange staying very high. In the back five for NC State, a well-regulated machine. First time in two decades that head coach George Kiefer has gone with this sort of formation. It's worked so far. No nonsense clearance. Luke Hilly lost his footing. Referee didn't sound the whistle, and now he will. Yeah, it's a handball. Hilly batted it with his left arm. You mentioned the stat for NC State playing ACC competition on the road. It's the first time they've led in a game since October the 1st. They were up 1-0 against then number 15 Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish came back to win 3-1. Syracuse just got to move the ball. They got to keep the ball moving. If you're NC State, if you can prevent stuff like that from happening, anything can happen on a day like today with this kind of rain. Great cross by Edwards. Kalukian just underneath it. Jumped a little early, the sophomore. Edwards kind of flies under the radar a lot of times, but he's... Coach McIntyre says he's the first guy on the team sheet every game. He's a professional. He shows up every day, works hard. Not to mention his numbers are off the charts. 
at the end of every game, he's the one who's got the highest number of high sprints. He's really a worker. Agostini in pursuit and going down at the edge of the area. And referee motions the graduate student to get up. Edwards trying to carve out some space in the corner and lost it. The call on the field was no foul. Dean, what do you think? Well, good pressure here by D'Agostini. They're both getting tangled up. You know, you can look at that in two ways. Uh, one is, you know, things are going to get a little dicey here as the game starts to wear on, as we said, with a goal scored. You know, everybody was happy when it was 0-0. But when somebody gets, when there's a goal, you know, all of a sudden, things polarize. And we talked about Mr. Rivero having an easy day. His day got tougher when that goal went in because now Syracuse is going to be pressing to keep the play moving. NC State's going to be stepping on the brake pedal when they can to extend and, and try and ride this out in terms of taking time off the clock. Still too early, though, I think, to, to look at a game that way. they got to keep playing. And while a Syracuse fan may not want to look at the scoreboard, really from a neutral perspective, this game has completely opened up. Goal will do that. Loma picked up his back foot. Lukian now losing his. Lawson Abbas had some words to say as well, and he's shoved away by his teammate before he can continue his rambling. These are dangerous. The goal area is, you know, starting to get softer. The matchups with Belouz. He's right in the middle of this mix. He and Buter matched up. Pedro Gosa headed it down. There were some NC State players in the way. Feels for a handball as well. Mateo Levesque the first to ask for it. Pedro Gosa's done well to get on the end of that. The initial attention on those set pieces go to Schoberg and Belouz as big bodies, but Pedro Gosa very good in the air, as is Makina, who find ways to get themselves into the mix. Agostini trying to just flick it on. Kalukian had the legs to get there. Singleman, slide rule ball, gets by the defender. Kalukian overlapping. Around one, nearly around two. And cut away. It's a good piece of defending. Singleman and Kalukian, nice work to try and break them down on that side, but back line of NC State's held firm to this point. The lose pass easily picked up by Irving Cruz. Freshman continues his run and receives the return ball as well. Cruz going in and going down. Ball going out for a corner. Gabriel McKenna thought it was a goal kick. He might have been right. Both players running stride for stride. He was right. Yeah, actually, it does look like it caromed back off of Cruz over the end line. But it's not something that's reviewable. NC State is, has gained you know, a great deal of confidence. The goal obviously revs your team up, puts wind in your sails, gives them the adrenaline they need to carry out the day. Syracuse prominent offensively off set pieces. NC State looking to test their defensive fortitude now. Short ball, skipping one that Booster went down with his head for it. Schober got there first. A good Agostini goes down under a very difficult challenge. It's a good break for the Orange here. 
caught him while they're out. Numbers flying forward, stood up in the middle. It's Lofton and Pedragosa got there. Marching, marching, marching. Kachevsky now, no way through. And play will stop as the referee will go back for a yellow card on the earlier challenge. Card debut. It's a good break by Syracuse. NC State, one of the things that with a corner and you're pressed up many of your players into the opponent's half of the field. It's one of the few times Syracuse has had some space to attack into. They took advantage of it. Well, here we go. It's a Giorgio Kachevsky corner for Syracuse. We know how this one ends. Question is, can they do it again? Down a goal at home to a team looking for its first ACC road win since 2019. Kachevsky's delivery into a dangerous area. NC State was first to it. Great service. On a day like today, that creates all kinds of nightmares for the defending team. Kachevsky keeps his footing and wins the ball back. Another example, Kachevsky's all over the place, does a lot of the dirty work. You, you know, everyone points to the assist, but, you know, he's the guy taking the corner. He's the guy also winning the ball at the midfield line, winning it back for his team after the thing turns over. And that's really the nature of this sport. It's not really stat-driven like a baseball or a football. Players like Kachevsky who work so tirelessly on both ends of the game sometimes aren't given their credit. Well, I think, too, you know, we talked earlier in the telecast how Kachevsky, you know, he's always charged with, he's back in the middle now. He had drifted out wide in the first half, but he's back in the middle. He usually draws the assignment of the other team's best player. When the ball turns over, he's got to find the best, the other team's top midfielder. And, um, you know, that's a lot of responsibility because that's where you diffuse another team's ability to get forward. Edwards, no way through. Nate Edwards was on the left side of Syracuse going forward. Now over on the right, Coach McIntyre shifting a couple options around. One option we haven't seen a lot of today is Lorenzo Baselli Comes into this game as the leading goal scorer for Syracuse, but hasn't scored in a couple outings now. Syracuse really got to move the ball. Got to get back to the, the, this last couple of games they've really demonstrated the ability to get the ball moving they need that they, they need that now more than ever to be able to kind of unbalance the numbers that nc state get behind the ball mateo levesque trotting over to the flag to take the corner kick the yukon transfer puts his right arm up plenty to aim at in the area Kina was one of them, but in triple coverage. And Utah Toya went in strongly to win the ball. So too did Nate Edwards, who's come back to the near side. Kachevsky needs help. Gets it with Levesque. Kalukian trying to make space. Leaves it for Levesque. Nearly materializing. Now a singleman now. NC State sending first guy, second guy. They're really doing a good job of getting guys out wide on the flank to diffuse anything Syracuse tries to do out wide. Coach Keen for motioning for the Wolfpack to step up a little bit. It's not something they've done very often today. Well, I think they were content in the first half to shorten the game a little bit by just frustrating Syracuse, but... Uh, you know, they do need to take advantage of the territory when they can. Ball over the top finds Kalukian. Nicholas Kalukian found space. Didn't find anybody on the end of his cross. Pablo Pedragosa now against his former side. Stamped away. Levesque. Diagostini. Matteo Levesque! Some save by the freshman keeper, Samuel Taranova. And there's a piece of that combination play that 
can get Syracuse the, the ability to unlock this defense. Levesque playing the ball forward, running off. D'Agostini, great job holding off pressure and laying the ball off. Creates the chance for Levesque. Great save by Terranova. Up to the task. It is an attacking change for either side. Michael Susky on for the Orange. Junior Nare on for NC State. The Trebella shot from Mateo Levesque earns a Syracuse corner. Another good delivery. Free header. Parried away. D'Agostino with the header. Cross blocked as well. And Luoma gives an opportunity for the Wolfpack to step up once again. Michael Susky into the game out wide for Syracuse to try and inject a little bit of energy. Fresh legs. His first appearance in the half. Right on the touchline if they can find him early. Syracuse now finally starting to test Samuel Terranova in net for the visitors. Just two shots on goal for number 22. Schoberg went to ground, kept it alive. Pachewski now. Pedragosa. Suski's first touch sets it back. Pachewski wanted to go himself. And see Bruce working slid in. really hard. The row of four and the row of five working really hard to try and get there to put people under pressure. Pedro Gosa to whip it in and got well underneath it. Bounced through everybody. Once again, good service by Kachevsky. Header off the post. I thought initially that might have been a Terranova save, but maybe it went off the post. Good sequence for Syracuse. Service was key again by Kachevsky. Agostini, no room to turn. Just a NC State numbers around the ball is impressive if they can keep this up. Utah Toyo started the attack. He's been everywhere for the last 15 minutes or so. Yeah, he's had a better second half. Junior Nari does make that change. It's number 10 on for number two. In fact, for both teams. Lorenzo Baselli added to the mix. Nate Edwards making way as well. It's a good move by Coach McIntyre. He's got Baselli out wide. He's good at breaking down defenders. If they can find him early enough, he's a guy who could make a play that, that gets in behind that unlocks this defense by NC State. They're doing a really good job of keeping their shape, NC State. Peels for offside against Toya. Just played it against Baselli. Utah Toya, a freshman from Japan. Played the full 90 in the last two matches back-to-back. -back. He's actually an impressive player. Technical guy. Uh, covers a lot of ground. Flies a little bit under the radar. The last couple games, NC State hasn't been on the ball as much, but when they are, he can be a guy who's pulling the strings in there alongside Butte. Edragosa went in and won the ball. Enrique Santos, unlucky not to get it. Makina. It's looking more like a back four now for Syracuse with Makina. He's peeled away from the center of the park and has gone on the right side, almost alongside Josh Belouz. Bounces over Belouz's head. Luke Hilly will settle. Has the overlapping run, but kept it himself. Butte's pass intercepted by Baselli. Kalukian now. Lorenzo Baselli back on the ball. Off the bench with fresh legs. And gives it right back to the Wolfpack. Neither team taking much care of the ball in the middle third of the pitch. Physical challenge. Whistle stayed silent. 
Another one coming in. See, if you're either coach, you do not want your team fouling. I mean, what, what a foul does for whatever team is the recipient of the next free kick, on a day like today, you're allowing your opponent to serve a ball into your box where the ground is getting worse by the minute and the potential for the ball bouncing around in your box and something bad happening. Just keep your feet, defend, you, you know, trust in the fact that, you know, you can defend people and trust the people that are behind you, but fouling uh, is not a good thing. This, this puts NC State in a difficult position, especially with Kachevsky serving. Suski onto it. Kareen's off of Basumzi Plamana. Settled by Baselli! And the whistle sounds. Samuel Taranova stood his ground. Wouldn't have counted, but it's some stop by the freshman. So Basili, the recipient of this ball, as it comes down, gets a good strike. Taranova, the save. You see the reaction from his teammates as yeah. well. He's done well today, but again, all created by a needless foul earlier. You can avoid all of those situations by not fouling either team. Taranova will go into the book. Took too long. 86% save percentage on the year. It's very high for goalkeepers. It is only his third appearance. J.C. Rivero doing his best to try and keep this thing moving. Sending a message to not waste time. He had eight saves against number 15 Duke in his collegiate debut, and now he has his first collegiate yellow card. Toya. Clipping it long. The flag will go up. Luke Hilly, the point man for a lot of NC State attacks, hasn't really been involved as much as Coach Kiefer would have liked, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure maybe not so much on the attacking side of the ball, but he is doing a lot of work, you know, trying to run things down, keep the ball on one side of the field so the team behind him can kind of lock it in, get across the field and get numbers behind the ball. Clearance goes off Susky. It's Tommy interesting. Tommy wins a goal kick. It's interesting, today's game, you know, you, today's game requires, you know, defenders to be able to attack, attacking players to be able to press and defend, and, you know, we talked both about Kaluki and, and Hilly, you, you know, the work they do on the other side of the ball, the not-so-glamorous part, they both do it, and it, it helps their team. Again, not what you would expect out of an attacking player in terms of getting noticed for, but... They do have a role, and they both perform it pretty well. Kim Karamoko, the goal scorer today, continuing his streak. He's got five points in his last three matches. Had an assist last time out against Duke. It was his first appearance in nearly three weeks. The one before that marked with a start and a goal against Gardner-Webb to close out September. With he and Nare on the other side, they can be formidable. You know, the midfield, they're in that row of four for NC State, each wide on each side, but those balls that get played up to Hilly, those guys have the green light to get forward. Dean, that passing sequence had echoes of that it did. Clemson sequence as well, the one-touch tiki-taka play. Not quite with the same result, but Syracuse is capable of that. They can put a long ball over the top, that route one pass, and test the back line, but they can also link up as well. Levesque, more one-touch passing. Kachevsky went down. Didn't have much to say to the referee. Those balls that, you know, as Syracuse tries to get out wide and get around the flank, it's difficult, but many times if you play a ball into a player, attacking player who's up against one of the three center backs, that can draw them in, a ball laid off, and then a ball punched through, or a lot of, that can break a team down. You know, the, the difficult part is there's not a lot of room to play into because you're up against the, the back of their team and there's little real estate in behind them to play into. But that ball into their feet, anything can happen. Fouls can happen. Layoffs in the shot can happen. But engaging the center backs when you got them pressed into that part of the field. Oh. 
Awkward sliding challenge. There's a bit of schoolyard defending in there. Edwards settled. Abbas split the lines for Toya. What piece of work there by Toya. Play out of that pressure. Toya goes down. The attack continues on without him. Opportunity maybe for another shot for NC State. Booster Schoberg getting in the way of Junior Nare. Nare trying to run at Schoberg. Schoberg showing you why he was drafted in the third round. Good piece of individual defending there. JC Rivero just stepping in front of Mateo Levesque at the wrong time. Michael Susky now. Boston College transfer. Moves it along for the NC State transfer. Pedro Gosa. Who against his former team has played a couple Aaron passes now. Good piece of work there. Finding a two versus one out wide. Need a little bit more quality in the final third with regard to the cross. But Syracuse doing a good job there. The speed of play has increased for Syracuse. That's what they needed to do, but now it's just, from a technical standpoint, it's not as concise, it's not as crisp. Well, somebody's going to have to make a play. Somebody's going to have to, in a situation even like that last one, you know, the cross has to be better, and then there's got to be that well-timed run on the other end of it to cut across a defender and finish the thing off. So if you're Coach McIntyre, who do you look to tonight with 75 minutes played? From those 75 minutes, who's that guy that's going to make a play? Well, I, I think maybe it's not so much a particular player as it is just staying composed. You play with urgency, but you don't get away from what you're doing. The successful things like the last sequence that got you through and got you the opportunity. You just got to be cleaner in the final third. Chevsky. That's a great ball. Good first touch, too, by Michael Susky. Tried to pick out Diagostini at pace. It was cut away once again. Schoberg. Oh, that's a foul. Immediate appeals. It was right in front of the Syracuse bench. Luke Hilly went over the back of Booster Schoberg, who is still adjusting his... I, see, I think the other thing, too, Philip, is it doesn't have to be like some clean textbook play. You know, many times a broken play where a defended ball isn't completely cleared, you win a second ball, slip it through to a player. Things like that can happen as long as everybody's, you know, alive to the situation, stay in the moment, stay composed, and focused on what the task at hand is and not get caught up in the little individual battles and pulling and tugging and fouling and just keep playing. Lose. 14 minutes now from SU Soccer Stadium. I mean, Syracuse's wide players are pressed up against the back line of NC State. NC State holding a little bit higher line. Let's see, even balls in here pressuring that and finding a front runner's feet who's pressed up against one of the center backs is the way through, but you got to do it early. Levesque, the Agostini for Lorenzo Baselli. It's in the back of the net. A calamity for NC State, but Syracuse gets the all-important equalizer. Starts with a ball into a player who's up against the center back. Good ball here. Slip through. Baselli with the shot. The knockdown deflects into an NC State player. I think that's... Who is that? Is that Edwards? No, I think it's... Lissunzi uh, Plamana. It's Plamana. Unfortunate for NC State. But those are the kind of goals that get scored on that get scored on a day like today. Lamana with his head in his hands. Still much to play for though. Both sides. It was another great save from Samuel Terranova. And not necessarily a bad play from Vasumzi Plamana, just the wrong place at the wrong time. Right. And it's just what Syracuse needed. Now they can get their spirits up. They've got a little bit of wind in their sails confidence to keep pushing forward 
you know, eases a bit of the frustration. Now they're going to press and see if they can get the winner. NC State's got to regroup. Dean, when I asked you who that one guy is going to be that makes a difference for Syracuse, I didn't expect it to be an NC State player. Yeah, well, things like that happen on days like today. Which is why you don't want the ball in your box, ever. <laughs> when it's, these are the conditions. The Agostini cross for Edwards. He slid in just a little bit too late. And now there is some renewed vigor with Syracuse on offense. D'Agostini's had a good second half. He's been dangerous, getting crosses in. I mean, that's a perfect cross. Yeah, initiating combination play. He's really been busy in the second half. Levex corner. Josh Ballou's his header. Cleared away. D'Agostini on the volley over the bar. Good opportunity for Syracuse. Josh Ballou's with the initial header. Cleared. These balls that come out are key. You got to you know, you got to either be first to it to get the shot off. You're, if you're Syracuse, if you're NC State, you got to get to it to either close the person down or clear your lines. Luke Hilly will make way for Scotty Taylor. The Duke transfer tasked with getting some momentum back for the Wolfpack up top. In fairness to Lawson Abbas and Kendall Edwards and Plumina, they've done a good job in the back of NC State. It was unfortunate. Felipe D'Agostini will get there. Lack of confidence, really, from NC State clearing their lines. And a lack of a clear pass from D'Agostini. He nearly won it right back. Now Karamoko. Tussle between the freshman and the graduate student. The freshman goes down and wins the free kick. Did the hard work to close him down. Again, not, not ideal to foul him there. Uh, let's get NC State off the hook. Now they can move everybody out. They're going to free swipe at the ball to get it further up the field. But D'Agostini did a good job of pressuring him. The guy's running back towards his own goal, towards the end line with nowhere to go. You let him off the hook by fouling him. And before that free kick was taken, Juka Maslin, the assistant coach for Syracuse, was barking at Nate Edwards to step up a little bit. We've talked about his athleticism, his ability to cover ground, and he was nearly at the back post for what would have been a tap-in. Well, Syracuse is pressed up. I mean, when Baselli steps up further, you know, now the wide guys have pushed up. They've got four up against the back five of NC State to kind of even out the numbers. And Agostini, Chevsky. Sequence of pinball results in another goal kick. Lorenzo Baselli. It was his shot that turned into a goal for Syracuse. He's got five on the year, three with his head, despite only standing at 5'11. Ten minutes to go. Points on the line. Less than two weeks out from the start of the ACC tournament, which kicks off on the 1st of November. You know, we talked, Philip, about, you know, the glut of ties and how that draws the teams closer together in the standings. When games end in ties, that's a huge difference when both teams leave with the same amount of points as opposed to one team leaving with three and the other with zero. When you have a winner and a loser, it really brings... The, the pack even closer together in what is really a very competitive league already. Taylor. Schoberg. The Swede wins the bout. Kalukian. Time now for Levesque. He's got to keep that moving. Makina. Trying to do just that, but slowed it down quite a bit. But the initial turnover, 
the first three or four passes, get the thing moving, keep it moving. The you got to fight the temptation to run with the ball unless you're running it at a player. But running with the ball, let the ball do the work. Play the next guy. Trap it, play it, move it. Levesque. Felipe Agostini. Let's see if you can find Kalukian in here with a ball that engages one of the center backs. That's how you're going to split this open. Now there's space in behind, in behind the other two center backs to slap balls. That All ball towards right Kalukian. There. Right Touched it on for Baselli. It was Plamana at the near post, and Abbas just kicked it out. Syracuse has responded to the five at the back for NC State by just throwing midfielders forward. And worrying signs for Coach Kiefer and the Wolfpack now. Well, they're going to have to be clean in front of their own box here as far as defending this. Josh Ballou's got a free header from the same spot a couple minutes ago. This time along the ground and much more easily dealt with by the visitors. I think Syracuse was hoping for maybe a better service there. Again, putting, putting the ball into the box and into the goal mouth really puts pressure on NC State. Calls for Kaczewski to turn. His footing let him down. Now will Butte the other way. And immediately cut away. The Agostini told to turn this time. Baselli. One two with Kalukian. Lorenzo Baselli strike into a defender. Still bouncing around. The Agostini thought about the overhead. Kalukian going to ground. Coach McIntyre up in arms. The referee has waved it off. McKenna. Edwards on the turn. Corner kick. Good opportunity here for Syracuse. They got to get this one in the box. They got to get to a spot where the ball has to get to a spot where players are competing for it. They can, and Syracuse can compete for knockdowns if they don't win the outright header. NC State's got to clear clear this thing out. It was Levesque looking for Belouz once again. The two transfers nearly connecting. It's all Syracuse now. Six minutes. From SU Soccer Stadium. Vaselli's done well since he's moved into the middle. He's linking up with Kalukian. These balls that are into a player pressed up against the back three initiate it and unlock the defense and give Syracuse angles to play the next ball in behind. Both these teams only have one more game. For NC State, it's against number 15, Clemson. Syracuse will travel to Boston College. For the Wolfpack in particular, they're trying to avoid an October without a win for the first time since 2000. Edwards towards Baselli! Terranova got a hand to it, lost his footing, but somehow kept the ball out of the back of the net. This is classic Lorenzo Baselli running in the box. Well-timed runs, waiting until the last minute. He gets in a blind spot and gets across his defender at the very last second to get his noggin on that. It seemed that the goalkeeper, Samuel Taranova, mistimed his jump a little bit. Dean, what did you see? Well, I, I've often said of, of Baselli, he's sneaky good in the air. And if you see that from the, its outset, I was kind of watching him in the box. I mean, he's very good at the last second, just cutting across his defender. And he's in the blind spot. Baselli flicked it on, off the crossbar. Pedro goes the shot blocked. And again, Baselli, the near post header flick on. Baselli flicking it again. It's still alive. And it's denied by the referee's whistle. McKenna put it wide anyways. A frantic sequence for Syracuse. So in as much as you have all that attention on the big boys at the back post, you got Baselli running to the near post. Both Levesque and Giorgio Kachevsky find him often at the near post, but there... Booster gets a little bit in the way of, a, of a, an attempt at goal. But that's the havoc that gets created in front of the goal when you just put the ball there. Lorenzo Baselli bearing it on goal. Tested Terranova. But really the quality of the strike may be lacking from a player of his caliber. Great through ball here to push him through. Another header from Schoberg this time. 
Vasily's really making his presence felt. NC State's got to regroup here. Syracuse has taken over these last 10 minutes, played with a lot of urgency. I think at this point, NC State would be happy to walk out of here with a point. Syracuse is going to press right to the end. Dean, on that last chance, Lorenzo Baselli took the shot, and really you'd back him to take that shot and score it, but he had an open man to pass to. Did he do the right thing there? I mean, it wasn't the result that he was expecting, I'm sure. Right. I'm not sure. We. Uh, the thing is, did he have an angle to slip it to him? There was, wasn't much space to play it in front of Kalukian because... The keeper can come out and grab that. I think his defender took a good angle to cut out that passing lane. Had he done it early enough, he may have been able to slip it to him, which I think might have been the opportunity if you were going to play him. But once he took the first touch in behind, you know, that angle goes away. You know, perhaps, you know, he can do a better job of slotting it to either side, just inside the post. But either way, good opportunity. And I'm sure Kalukian would have welcomed a pass there, but tough to say from our angle. Referee has added an additional 10 seconds to the clock. It may feel like 10 years for NC State at the rate this game is going. They've got the ball now. Coach McIntyre urging his men forward. And Coach Kiefer introducing Irving Cruz back into the fray. Kim Karamoko, whose goal started the afternoon. He's had a good day today. He's done his job. You were impressed with his first half and right on cue. Scored in the second. And actually, Cruz has done well for himself as well. But right now, they need to hold the fort. Syracuse is throwing everything at him here. Hadragos' first touch, maybe a little too good. Cruz now lost his footing, but got the pass away to Luke Hilly. Wolfpack on the prowl, and numbers getting forward as well. One of them is Santos. Tried to play it through. Callum Tommy. Careens his shot off the side of the net. Great attack by NC State here. And a good attempt at a shot. Dangerous. Pablo Pedregosa went into the book after the fact for his play against Cruz. Actually a really good idea by Kachevsky just didn't get his footing right to get that ball. Still ended up in the right spot, which was D'Agostino. These balls hurt them. The ball into the front runner. Cruz once again. Baselli getting away with it. NC State doing well to bend in that break here. Taken down by Felipe D'Agostini. And Lawson Abbas went to ground and got a foot in the way. Deflection. D'Agostini has made his mark here. He's earned his dinner tonight. Let me tell you, he's had, he's been involved in a lot of dangerous attacks, really creating problems for NC State. NC State is, like I said, they're bending, but they haven't broken. Still got a minute and 25 seconds to get through. Bounce all the way through. Diagostini again lashed at it and couldn't keep his shoulders over the ball. Needed to be better there. Probably jinxed him. Good service. Dangerous. Anything in front of the net, just needed to get over that, get his foot through it. But from that, from that sort of distance, you don't need to be crushing it. You just got to pick your spot and put your foot through it. Yeah, I, I think he's got to put it on frame. There's a lot of traffic in front of the goal, but that's got to go on frame. Syracuse, though, has really picked up the tempo. And Final minute now from SU Soccer Stadium. Regular season closer for the defending national champions. Looking to steal another two points. Diagostini again. Going to have to be quick here. 30 seconds to go. NC State's going to have to be clean if they want to get out of here with a point. Diagostini. Makes two men miss. Cross towards Edwards. Will fall to Giorgio Kachevsky. Settled in the box. Makina went down. Abbas got it away. There's 13 seconds. Time maybe for a cross. And to lose. has got to get out of their box there. They got to get up. Under hit it. And the honors will be even. Syracuse closes out the regular season with a tie. NC State gets an important point on the road.